VoiceAmerica.com. Welcome to Crime Prevention 101 with host Susan Bartlestone. We're so happy you've joined us this weekend. Over the next hour, you'll learn the tips, tricks, and vital information that'll help you keep yourself confident and safe. Now, here's the host of Crime Prevention 101, Susan Bartlestone. Welcome to Crime Prevention 101, and I have, I'm have i just so excited about my show today. You know, identity theft is one of the fastest-growing crimes in America, and it affects over 10 million people a year and counting, running into a cost of billions of dollars. It can take years to clean up your credit once you've been victimized, and, and all the thief needs is a few key pieces of information, and they can go ahead and assume your identity. Nobody is immune. Celebrities like Oprah Winfrey and Steven Spielberg have been victimized. So since October is Crime Prevention Awareness Month, and it's also Domestic Violence Awareness Month, on today's show, I'm going to focus on the crime prevention aspect and the problem of identity theft and what can be done to protect your identity from being stolen and how to repair your credit after you've been victimized. And I've got a Great guest today, Todd Davis, who is the CEO of LifeLock and one of the top spokespersons on the topic of identity theft prevention in this country. So this is going to be a really great show. But uh, before I introduce Todd, I just have a few tips that uh, came my way that, and a couple of announcements real quick. Um, for those men out there who would like to stay dry and safe at the same time, Someone in England has designed a bulletproof raincoat. I thought this was great. Uh, it, it fits the standards, uh, European standards for bulletproof vests. It's a low-key zip-up, and it will shield you from wind, rain, and a 44 Magnum. Very handy, right? Weighs less than 7 pounds so that you don't look or feel like you're covered in sheet metal. And it's stab-proof. So you're immune to switchblades, ice picks, hypodermic needles, and broken bottles. And uh, they come, it comes in a denim or a bomber type edition for you fashion conscious guys. And for the boardroom, there's, uh, there's what's called an executive waistcoat, coat, what, executive waistcoat, which can be, I guess that's a vest, which can be worn under a suit jacket and that uh, nobody has to know you're uh, taking precautionary messages. You know, talk about swimming with the sharks, right? This bulletproof raincoat is $2,500, and it comes from Spy Catcher of Knight, Knight's Bridge, and that's spycatcheronline.co.uk. I thought that might come in handy for some of my uh, listeners out here. Also, I got an email from a uh, listener of the show, Martin, and he said, uh, I'd like to share an idea that uh, I do now after getting mugged in San Francisco. When I carry, uh, when I travel, I carry a fake wallet with a little pocket money, fake ID, and fake credit cards. My real ones are hidden in a pouch inside my shirt. If I get mugged again, I'll hand them my fake wallet from my back pocket. He said, just a suggestion. I like it. I thought it was a great idea, and I, I, that's something that uh, I talk about also called mugger money, where you just have a little bit of money on hand and keep the, uh, the large amount of money you might be carrying in a different place. And by the way, on my DearSafetySolutions.com website, I've got Meeting Up with the Mugger tip sheet, which is going to take you from A to Z, what you can do if you meet a mugger, so you may want to check that out. Two short announcements, and I'm going to introduce my guest. Uh, I got an email asking when the next Crime Prevention 101 Think Fast, Talk Fast, Fight Smart teleseminar is, is going to be, and I'm happy to tell you we've got one coming up at the end of October, beginning of November, so stay tuned. And you can also click on the little banner that's at the bottom of my host page. It's going to take you right to the information page on it. And also, just want to let everyone know that my new book, Think Fast and Prevent a Violent Crime, is going to be out by the end of this month, and I'm so excited, and I'll be telling you more about it as the time approaches. But now, let's talk about ID theft, and I want to introduce Todd Davis to you. 
He is a certified identity theft risk management specialist. He's the member. He's a member of the Crime Prevention Coalition of America. He is a contributing member of the ID theft prevention and ID management standards panel. Woo, mouthful. And uh, that, but that very prestigious group is going to be working with the president's ID theft task force. He is the CEO of LifeLock, the first identity theft prevention company in the country. He has been featured in over 300 news stories, including the Wall Street Journal, Money Magazine, MSNBC, CNN, CNBC goes on and on and on. And yes, now I know you've seen the ads. They're on TV, they're in magazines, on billboards. They're on the side of trucks roaming through the street. He's standing by the truck, and the truck says, 457-55-5462. Yes, that is his real social security number, and he is proud to exhibit it. Todd Davis, welcome to Crime Prevention 101. Susan, thanks so much for having me on, and I'm glad to see that my you got the write-up from my mom. So I think you got everything covered there. I'm glad she's getting that out for me. I had to uh, cut out two pages. You have a very impressive <laughs> bio here. Thank you, All right. Susan. Todd, what is ID theft? And we're not talking about just charging stuff to a credit card. That's right. In fact, the, the federal government defines identity theft. They, they really lump in a couple of categories. So true identity theft is when someone poses as you to go get open new accounts or get new services provided. Uh, identity fraud, which we lump into the overall statistics, is when someone gets a hold of one of your existing credit cards or, or debit cards, an existing account, and does fraudulent charges. So generally speaking, there are some pretty good protections in place, and especially if you use a you know, Visa or MasterCard logo or, or an Amex, some protections for you if it's identity fraud. If you notify your credit card issuing bank in a timely fashion, they usually dictate that to be within 30 days of your billing statement. You're usually not going to have a, a great um, hard time cleaning that up, getting the charges reversed and, and working with them to clear it up. But true identity theft, someone posing as you to go gain employment or get a new credit card or get medical services, and that's the one that is a nightmare. Bank accounts, Social Security benefits, that's renting right. apartments, uh, get, taking out loans in your name to buy houses, establishing uh, accounts with utility and, and uh, telephone providers. I mean, this is major, major identity theft. It's major identity theft, and the biggest problem is those third parties, when, when you're opening that new account, they don't just take your word for it. When you call up and tell the Social Security Administration, oh, I didn't underpay my taxes, that was someone else posing as me to work, unlike the credit card issuing bank, they don't take your word for it. They don't say, oh, okay, sorry about that. We'll take that right off. They are going to say, we need a full investigation. You have to prove that it was not you that owes those back taxes. You have to prove that it was not you opening those utilities, or you're not going to get new ones. They're not going to issue you new utilities. You, you know, it, it has impaired your credit now, your credit worthiness, until you go clean the mess up. And unfortunately, as you duly noted, Susan, Federal Trade Commission tells us it can take hundreds of hours over a two-year period, on average, over a two-year period, to clean that kind of problem up if you can fix it at all. Yeah, that is, that's huge. That's huge. And most people don't know about this, that, about, that the theft has occurred, has occurred right, until they've been, been turned down by something, or they don't always find this right away, this kind of stuff. In fact, it's about an average of a year after the incident occurs that we find out about it. And that's as adults. You know, I could get into children, the fact that children may not find out for years and years, and that's that's a whole topic we may want to talk about at some point, but uh, there's, there's no checks and balances in for children. Exactly. So it can take years. And I understand uh, from babyhood, they can, if you file for a Social Security number for your child, that can be, that identity can be taken over. 
Well, and in fact, uh, I'm gonna. Uh, this is going to be a little scary. I'm going to paint a picture for you here about how this works and, and, and the way our system is broken today. But good news, as you usually do, Susan, we're going to tell people how they can, how they can counterbalance this, how they can right. put steps in place to prevent it. But let me tell you how the system works today. If you have a child that has a Social Security number, they can be victimized. And we see it, unfortunately, I'm not kidding, happening at hospitals where, when children are born. Right, and mm-hmm. as, at that early an age, they can have their identity stolen. When they go out, when the identity thief goes out and applies for a new credit card, so I'll just use that as an example for now. They're going to use their own name. So if I'm the identity thief, I'm going to say I'm Todd Davis. Uh, I'm a 40 year old male. Here's my PO box in in Phoenix, Arizona. But I'm going to use that child social security number, who by the way may be a young girl in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm-hmm. Right. It doesn't matter. I'm going to put that on the application. When the uh, issuing bank, when the credit card company goes to check that credit file, they're going to get back a report that says this is a valid Social Security number, but we have no other history associated with it. So there are no checks and balances that, wait a second, this should be a female. She should be three years old. She lives in Atlanta. Th- those checks and balances do not exist. It just says it's a valid Social Security number with no history. But now it gets worse. They accept whatever information we put on that application, the credit card application, as accurate. So if I if I look at one of the credit bureaus, I'll use Experian as the example. So if Experian then receives that application, does the credit check, they accept that information and put it on file. So now Me as the identity thief, you know, I'm probably using an alias, but Mm -hmm. I'm going to get, I'm only going to get a $500 or whatever, $300, $500, $700 line of credit because there's no history. But then I can just sit on it. I don't use that line of credit or I may buy something and pay it off. The next thing you know, I'm going to be getting pre-approved credit offers in whatever alias I'm using mailed to me in Arizona for me to use for the next however many years, 10, 12 years until I finally decide I'm going to max this thing out, I'm going to build up the credit, I'm going to max it out, I'm going to be gone. And then when that young girl goes to get her first job application or student loan or car insurance, they don't find out till then that, wait a second, you have horrible credit. (laughs) And they've got a huge mess to go clean up. And all all a thief needs is name, address, date of birth, social security number, and a mother's maiden name. And that's and that's it. That's right, it. Well, up- and in fact, if I really just have that social security number, for, especially from a child, but especially as an adult, if I have that information and know what state you live in, there are websites I can go to to get the rest of the public record info. I can that's go true. get your birth date. I, I don't have to know it for legally, now for a fee, 35 to 50 bucks. I can go get your last, Susan, your last addresses for the last 20 years, your birth date, your unlisted phone number. I can have everything I need. So now if I just had a social security number and your name, what state you live in now, that's all I need to get started. That's the scary part. But don't worry, I've got answers to all those. We got, we we got help coming. Todd, we're coming up on a break. Don't move from that dial. News, opinion, your voice counts. Call toll-free 1-866-472-5787, 1-866-472-5787, voiceamerica.com. After more than 17 years' experience teaching safety skills to thousands of women and men, crime prevention and personal safety expert Susan Bartlestone concluded that by thinking and responding quickly, ideally within 20 seconds, potentially violent criminal encounters can be prevented. Using techniques from many different disciplines and illustrated by 60 real-life examples and success stories, Susan shows how it's done in her new book, Think Fast and Prevent a Violent Crime, How to Respond to Danger in 20 Seconds or Less. Check out www.fightsafety.com. 
SusanSafe.com for more information. You'll also find information there on Susan's upcoming Crime Prevention 101 Personal Safety Teleseminars. Think fast, talk fast, fight smart. Would stress the many opportunities you have to deter or defuse a criminal encounter and how to use your brains instead of your muscles in a fight. Look for the new book information or sign up for Susan Bartlestone's Personal Safety Seminars at www.fightsafe.com today. Have you ever thought about having your own Internet talk show? Well, if you said yes, then click About Us. Then click Be a Host to get more information. Or just call Jeff Spinard at 480-294-6417. Say that again? 480-294-6417. VoiceAmerica.com. You're listening to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. We invite you to share your stories, tips, or suggestions for topics you'd like us to cover, and Susan will address some of these on future shows. Send your story or idea to solutions at fightsafe.com. That email address again is solutions at fightsafe.com. Now back to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. Welcome back. I guess nobody did touch that dial. Uh, yes, indeed, this is Crime Prevention 101. Susan Bartlestone here, and I'm talking with identity theft expert Todd Davis from LifeLock. Todd, let's talk about some of the ways, uh, some of the other, we talked a little bit about some of the ways that uh, people acquire your identity. What are some other things that, th- that well, thieves have been known to do? We see it really, it runs a couple of gannets. Number one, people need to understand this isn't just the dumpster diving and what we call social engineering. It's still a big component of it. So we see, uh, you know, whether it's waiters or waitresses doing something called skimming. Uh, we'll also see like fake devices, little uh, pieces they will put on the outside of an ATM machine. And what I mean right. by these skimming devices is that you either run your card up to an ATM, go run it through, it skims off from the magnetic strip the pertinent information, the information that they need. Um, and then, in fact, in some of those devices, they'll even then have a built-in camera that shoots down to get your PIN number, watches you type it in to the uh, keypad. But if it's a waiter or waitress, it may be that they have in their apron one of these skimming devices because they're very small. They just slide that magnetic strip through. It stores it on the memory device, and they will accumulate hundreds and sometimes even thousands of credit card uh, information, and then they go out and sell that on the black market. And they can Uh, sell it up. 30 times. Well, that's the worst part about this crime. So I'll I'll talk in just a second about how some other places it happens. But the worst thing about this crime is it's not like when someone steals your car, Susan. If I steal your car as an identity thief, I get to go, or as just a thief, I go take it to a chop shop. I sell it for the parts one time. You file your police report. It's a pain. You get your insurance claim. You replace your car. But it's over, right? Identity theft is completely different. Because your name, your birth date, your social security number uh, are almost impossible to change, right? Yeah, I mean, I can't change your birth date. It's not very easy to go change or, or pleasant to change your name or your social security number, right? So now that means that information is out there for anyone for a lifetime. And if I steal that information, I can sell it because I'm only selling copies of the information to as many buyers that want it. So that's what's so scary about this crime is then you get hit, they steal your identity, you spend the hundreds of hours like the FTC talks about, but you have to worry about something new popping up any time in your lifetime that it could rear its head again. So we really want people to understand the places they can get hit, the steps that they can take so that they prevent this from ever becoming a problem in the first place. So I talked about you know, some of the social engineering Waiters, waitresses, uh, uh, by the way, just dumpster diving. You know, we still have, we still see it. The meth addicts uh, are are especially a big part of this. They're just trying to go around, find some personal information, because if you can believe it, they can pay their drug dealers in personal information. They don't even have to turn it into money, (laughs) because that drug dealer, again, knows I'm giving them $20 worth of drugs for this personal information. I can resell this stuff over and over. So it's worth more to me. 
So we've got that social engineering side. We see the thieves breaking into our doctor's office, our dentist office, stealing their servers because they know they have all of our pertinent information for billing and insurance purposes. So unfortunately, we see them going there. So we have to be really careful about who we give the information to. Go ahead. I was going to say department stores. I mean, you, you hear this, this all the time. These, these people, get they can hack in and get all this in, personal information. Very, very well, scary. In, in fact, Susan, that's where people really need to understand the other side of this crime. It's organized crime. So it isn't just. So when you hear, uh, for example, we all heard about you know earlier in the year that TJ Maxx, TJX, and some of their subsidiaries. I mean, tens of millions of people had all their personal information, including credit card numbers, stolen. But this was organized crime at work. There was a ring. They've uh, arrested 11 people since then. But by the way, one of them was in Russia and had on him at the time, on a, a I think it was a USB device, a, a memory stick, over a million people's personal information, including credit card numbers. Right, So this was organized crime. They're going out. They know who we have to give our personal information to. They know we have to give it to our employer so we get paid, to our doctor, to our dentist, to the retail uh, person. They know we have to give it to our tax accountant, to our insurance provider, to our school. So the, they have a targeted effort. They have all the technology. You mentioned it in the beginning, Susan. It's a $50 billion a year industry. That's what the B. That means that they have access to all the technology, all the resources to go after penetrating these different organizations, these different entities, looking for thousands, if not millions of people's personal information all at once. So we have to be very careful. We have to be aware that there's going to be both this kind of social engineering, and by the way, that can even include friends and family members who may be in desperate or dire straits, all the way up to organized crime. Bribing people that, that have access to this kind of information. There's all numbers of way they, ways people can get that information. It's totally scary. Now, what are some of the signs that people should be alert for, you know, that might indicate that their identity has been compromised? Well, there's probably some of the obvious ones that would be, you know, watch those credit card statements for, for new, you know, billing kind of pieces. Um, you, you probably want to try to pull a copy of your credit report. You get a free one from each credit bureau each year. So if you actually break that out every, and order one every three months, you can cycle it through and, and not have to pay for a credit report. But I would tell you a couple other signs that, that people may not think of. If all of a sudden you start getting in your mailbox, you know, a catalog from a company you don't do business with that's really, you know, irrelevant. So uh, I'll use the example uh you know, maybe uh, your grandmother starts getting a, a catalog from uh, Harley Davidson aftermarket parts. You know, accessories for your Harley Davidson motorcycle. You know, you know what? You've made it on some database uh, out there that that you probably shouldn't be on. That's actually a red flag. If yeah, your kid's not buying a chopper, right? <laughs> exactly right. She's not riding her hog. That's so right. you know, you you want to check it for your kids. If your kids all of a sudden start showing up on some databases and start getting direct mail pieces. Now, I don't want people to panic if you see something because they, they, it's not that they can't make it on a database. And if, if uh, you know, you've opened them accounts for their college savings or grandma and grandpa, have, they could be on uh, a database somewhere. However, look at what's coming in. You want to be able to then, that should be a signal to you to dig deeper. Go detect if there is a problem. Go start looking again for a credit report for your child or looking at your own or helping grandma look at hers. Make sure that there's not some new accounts that have been opened you're unaware of. And that's going deeper. That is going to look at a at a credit report to have an idea that something's happened. Because unfortunately, Susan, most people don't find out until some collection agency starts calling about something dramatically past due and you say, what account? And they don't, they don't want to hear that, oh, my identity has been stolen. They don't believe you. What they'll say is, well, look, we can take care of this. You need to pay it, and we'll make this go away. And, and then, then not, all the ugliness not, starts. Uh, this is not paranoia. This is just being safe. This is being alert and aware. And this is because of, because of the insidiousness of this and the prevalence of it, you've got to be alert and aware. So, well, and, and being aware, it's the fastest-growing crime in America. It, this isn't paranoia. 
This is, you are now 25 times more likely to have your identity stolen than your car stolen. So, uh, you know, I don't deem anyone paranoid that locks their car or has a car alarm or has car insurance. That's not paranoid. That's being reasonable. You're 25 times more likely to have your identity stolen. Take the same steps. Be proactive in preventing this crime and taking the steps to detect something early so that you don't have this nightmare to go clean up later. That's a very important point. Now, now that we depressed everybody, <laughs> let's make them happier, all right? What are some of the things that we can do to safeguard information? Well, here is the great news. Look, if I can go out, and you did it in the introduction, and give out my real Social Security number, do the thing everyone tells you, do not do this, protect this, hide it, there's good news. Because there are steps in place, there are federal laws in place, and there are services in place that will protect people from becoming a victim in the first place. So the couple of few things that I'll hit at high points now, and then we can drill down as we go. But the high points are there are things like fraud alerts that consumers can sign up for. Now, if you've been a victim of identity theft already and have filed a police report, you can sign up for a fraud alert that lasts for seven years. If you just are concerned that, and have a fear you're going to be a victim of identity theft because you got a letter, you know, somebody losing your data or something, then you can set those and renew them every 90 days. Great tool. That's what I utilize at LifeLock and for me and my Social Security number because then and when someone goes to apply for that new credit card or get that you know, new mortgage or buy a new car, before they complete that transaction, I get a phone call. There's a note on my credit report that says, contact Todd at the following number to get his verbal authorization that it's him. So they're okay. supposed to take extra steps to validate that it is me making that request. So okay. that's How very about important. Stuff? How about stuff like shredding documents and papers so those dumpsters, divers can't get at them? A couple of little things like well, that. Yeah, so those are great, and we want people to use good common sense. Number one, be careful who you give your information to. If someone's asking you for it, you know, ask them the question, why do you need it and what do you do to protect it? Once I give it to you, where, where is it stored? How is it protected? When you get your personal information, shred those documents, you know, afterward. Use, and use a diamond cut, or we call it a cross cut or diamond cut shredder that you can find them in, you know, even to your local pharmacy. They're cost effect of your office supply store. Get one of those diamond cut. And then when it comes to things like Internet or even people calling you over the phone, anyone contacting you directly to ask you to verify information or wanting to get your personal information, right. never, right. never give that information out where you don't know, where you haven't prompted to call them. Or if someone's calling you to ask for it and you think it may be real, you tell them, hey, no problem. I'm going to call back to the main number I have for you, not one they give you then, but the main number. So if it is really Bank of America or PayPal or, you know, Wells Fargo calling me, I'm going to call your main number, and I'll get back to the people who need this personal information. And, and on the e uh, email or these websites as well, do not give that information. In fact, on these websites, when people are asking you for your personal information, you typically want to look for what's called a secure website. And here's how you'll know if it's secure. It'll say up in the website, uh, address HTTPS instead of HTTP, or it'll wow. have a little lock in the bottom right-hand corner. Then you can feel safe giving the information. Good tip. And I've got a ton of those, gotten those emails. There's some problem with your account and so forth. You never click on that link. Never. I always, I always go directly to the website, and I ask if there's any problem. Perfect. Great advice. Okay. Anyway, and... So, obvious stuff, of course. Don't give out a password. Don't don't have an obvious password like your birthday, your mother's name, your you know your social security number. You got you to be a little creative with those passwords. <laughs> That's Talk. right. We're coming up on another break, so hold tight. You out there, hold tight. We're going to be back. We're going to talk about more things that you can do to prevent and also what to do if you've been victimized. So stay tuned. Ask the experts. Call toll-free right now, 1-866-472-5787. Hello? And ask our all-star team to answer your question. That's 1-866-472-5787. Thank you for calling. VoiceAmerica.com. 
After more than 17 years' experience teaching safety skills to thousands of women and men, crime prevention and personal safety expert Susan Bartlestone concluded that by thinking and responding quickly, ideally within 20 seconds, potentially violent criminal encounters can be prevented. Using techniques from many different disciplines and illustrated by 60 real-life examples and success stories, Susan shows how it's done in her new book, Think Fast and Prevent a Violent Crime, How to Respond to Danger in 20 Seconds or Less. Check out www.fightsafe.com for more information. You'll also find information there on Susan's upcoming Crime Prevention 101 Personal Safety Teleseminars. Think fast, talk fast, fight smart. Would stress the many opportunities you have to deter or defuse a criminal encounter and how to use your brains instead of your muscles in a fight. Look for the new book information or sign up for Susan Bartlestone's Personal Safety Seminars at www.fightsafe.com today. In the spirit of Have Couch, Will Travel, Dr. Carol Lieberman creates a haven of sanity in an increasingly insane world. Each day we are bombarded with news of events that have never crossed our wildest nightmares. Society is spiraling out of control and everyone is reeling from it. But now there's an answer. The best way to keep sane in this insane world is to tune in to Dr. Carol's Couch on Voice America. Dr. Carol, a certified media psychiatrist, will broadcast live from her Beverly Hills office every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Call or log in and get help with whatever is sending you reeling whenever you need a soothing voice to calm and advise you. That's Dr. Carol's Couch every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Time here on America's Voice, voiceamerica.com. Talk, talk, talk. That's all we do is talk. If you'd like to talk, call us toll-free right now at 1-866-472-5787. 1-866-472-5787. That's it. That's it. VoiceAmerica.com. You're listening to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. We invite you to share your stories, tips, or suggestions for topics you'd like us to cover, and Susan will address some of these on future shows. Send your story or idea to solutions at fightsafe.com. That email address again is solutions at fightsafe.com. Now back to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. And welcome back again, everybody. And I'm here talking with Todd Davis from LifeLock, the identity uh, theft prevention company. And um, one more thing, we were talking about things that you can do uh, if you want to try to reduce your risk a little bit. Um, And we are talking a little bit. And uh, uh, I just wanted to say that I had the same experience. I go online and monitor my accounts, my credit card and bank accounts every day because I do a lot of online activity and I, you know, I do try to deal with the secure sites, but as we said, they can be hacked into. And sure enough, one of these days, times I actually did discover someone had gotten a hold of my credit card and was charging very small little amounts. So because I follow your advice, Todd, in fact, uh, I've got a confession to make to you. Okay. Uh, so I'll make it in a second. But I, I spotted that activity the day it happened, and I was on it right away, and I, I immediately shut down that credit card. And that was, you know, going back to the, the bottom line, too, is your awareness. Now that we're trying to give you the information so that you're going to be more aware of when something just isn't right. Now, I do have a confession to make, Todd, and I want to make it right now. Uh, I have been a member of LifeLock for about nine months. I want to talk a little bit about LifeLock. And now, uh, Todd, Todd did not know that I was a member of LifeLock when he agreed to do the interview with me on Crime Prevention 101. And my producer did not know this when she booked the interview with Todd. So this is not a setup or anything like that. I'm not paid by LifeLock in any way, shape, or form to vouch for them, but I'm just really positive about LifeLock, and that's why I was really glad to um, bring it to my audience's attention. And I want to talk a little bit about what people should do if they're victimized and how LifeLock helps with this. And just people should know, too, that their insurance companies provide ID theft benefits, but that's usually after the fact. It's something that you can add on an identity fraud clause on your on your usually homeowner policy, and that's something that people might want to look onto. Um, 
But let's talk now about, um, we talked about fraud alerts. And there are three major credit bureaus, right, that uh, that you're going to want to, if you've been victimized, that you're going to need to alert. So let's talk about that a little bit. Sure. Well, first, let me tell you, I am honored. I am thrilled to know uh, that announcement when someone who's such an expert in security and, and people taking care of themselves and personal security has, has chosen LifeLock. I'm certainly humbled by that. So I, I am I'm, uh, thrilled to know that you're a part of our family. So thank you for that. Wow. And I will tell you that that is our objective. So what people do need to understand is that we want to go educate you, just like you try to do, Susan. Here's what your rights are. Here are things you can do, even yourself for free. You do not have to sign up for a LifeLock. I want people to know that. Now, I'm proud of our service. We're kind of there uh, to do the things. If you're the type of person who does your own taxes, changes your own oil, great. Understand things like fraud alerts. Go out and place them, renew them yourself. Put that front line of defense in place. And I'm going to tell you what you can do after you've been a victim if you want to take that in. But we're also there for the people who like to hire a service, who want to have some expertise, because we're going to go out there, we're going to do these steps for you, and we're going to go out and do some things you can't do yourself, like you know, scouring the web, those websites and looking for your personal information being bought and sold. So you mentioned you monitor your actual credit card statements. We actually scour over 10,000 chat rooms, websites, et cetera, looking for your information, where they buy it and sell it. So, again, we can detect it early and we fix the problem for you and have our million-dollar guarantee that says we're going to be there for you if something happens. But I like that idea, too. <laughs> Well, we're trying to make it easy. I want to give people peace of mind. Hey, if, if we're worth $10 a month, great. If we're not, let me still educate you. I want us to beat this crime, Susan. I don't want the identity thieves to have the upper hand anymore. I want us to take the power back. And when we make it hard on these guys and when there are consequences for their action, that's how we're going to curb this crime. That's how we're going to win this battle. So for those that are out there that have had something happen to them, I do want to give a few kind of tips and pieces uh, of advice. Number right. one, regardless of how it happened, file a local police report. Okay? And by the way, even if it was a family member, if you're going to really resolve this, you need to go file a local police report. So even if your information is being sold on some, you know, website in Prague or some guy who used it, you know, internationally to buy something, you still need to file that local police report because you're going to need that to demonstrate that you were a victim of identity theft, to prove it when people start coming to you and saying, it, we believe you opened this new account. So number one, you need to file that local police report. You do need to register yourself with the FTC.gov website about being a victim of identity theft. Again, put yourself in that database so people can see there was a historical um, uh, acknowledgement of the fact that you were a victim. So it makes it easier down the road when you've got to go clean things up. If you hadn't set those fraud alerts, do so immediately. You can now do them for seven years with each of the three major credit bureaus, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. So that then, start pulling that copy of that credit report, start scouring those over, looking for those accounts and, and uh, services. You need to order a copy of your work history from the Social Security Administration. You're going to have to start monitoring those personal records and making sure that there's not been new account activity because you want to detect it very early and then get with that institution, again, show them the police report, the registration with the FTC, so that uh, you can get those wiped off your credit report. And you've got to do it in a timely fashion or, you know, if you don't do that, your, you know, local, the people managing your IRA or your local checking account, if you don't do it in a timely fashion, they may not... Uh, allow you to recover all your lost funds. So you want to get on that uh, right away and, and then just get your mindset right. It's going to take a while. This is not an, an easy and quick process. You're going to have to work with all three credit bureaus to get the erroneous information off the reports. You're going to have to work with whatever entities there are that had filed that on your credit report and get it cleaned up and hopefully work with local law enforcement to go nab that criminal because I hope there are consequences for those that, that do steal people's identities. And that's why we said in the earlier, this can take years but to deal with all the various uh, agencies and so forth that might be affected and whatever, whatever these thieves did to you. And 
and costs a great deal of money. That's- well, that's exactly right. Hopefully you can you know, catch it early enough so they don't hold you accountable. Although what we have found, when they start calculating in lost time from work, because, again, if it takes hundreds of hours, when are you doing this? You can't always do it after work on the weekends because some of the – the locations aren't open then. That's and, right. you know, we've all been through that experience of dialing the 800 number and being on hold for, you know, 20 something minutes before you even get to someone and they have to route you. So, unfortunately, for a lot of people, they have to become an expert on the credit bureaus and cleaning this stuff up. And, and we hate that. And that's why we want people to take these preventative steps so you don't have to get into the nightmare of cleaning things up or look at a service like a LifeLock. So, we'll be there for you if something did happen our service did fail, we actually do all that work for you. We'll actually go clean it up. We'll, we will go do everything the law allows us to do to make sure you're not out time or money if something did happen. Uh, I have a question, Todd, about the, the legal consequences in terms of if somebody is convicted, like this guy that got caught in Russia with a million uh, identities on him, what's, what's the legal penalty for that? Well, um, I... I I don't have great news here. So, number one, uh, the bad news is only one in 700 identity thieves get convicted. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and I don't say that to be a recruiting uh, slogan for identity thieves because it, we're we're working better together. We're using technology to our advantage, but we are working with legislators at a federal level so that we can have some greater penalties because the penalties just aren't great enough today to discourage that. So we've seen at state level, some of the states are beginning to do better about having harsher penalties, but we've got to work at a federal level to go after these guys and have some severe consequences when they're caught with more, especially more than one person's identity. You know, when, and so we're trying to say if there's, if they have literally three or more we want there to be even harsher penalties and mandatory sentencing for these guys. So, But today, it's not strong enough. The best deterrent is going to be us making the information useless, not them worrying about getting caught. That's, a, that's exactly what I was driving at. It just isn't – it's not strong enough to stop people from doing it. We're, unfortunately, the burden falls more on us preventing it at, at this point in time. I think you're – one of the uh, committees that you're on, though, you are working to strengthen the the um, the penalties for the people that get caught with this? Absolutely, and legislators are on our side. We're all working together. We're going to be able to find a way to have stronger laws, but we I just don't want consumers to say, well, I'll wait on, on legislation to solve this problem. That's not how we're going to win. We will get that as reinforcement, but understand your rights today. Take action today, and that's how we're going to prevent this crime. Excellent. Well, I'm... I hope to really somehow I can help out in this process. Uh, I have a couple of resources that I thought I thought uh, I would give people. We're coming up on our last break, so let me hold that, and then we'll talk about some of the resources that uh, people can use. So stay tuned. Don't go away. Have you ever thought about having your own Internet talk show? Well, if you said yes, then click About Us. Then click Be a Host to get more information. Or just call Jeff Spinard at 480-294-6417. Say that again. 480-294-6417. VoiceAmerica.com. Hello, we're Mike and Susan. Hello, I'm Catherine. We are the March of Dimes 2008 National Ambassador family. Although Catherine was born extremely premature with many challenges, today she is a healthy five-year-old thanks to the March of Dimes. I'm Don Germano, Senior Vice President of Kmart Stores. Kmart is proud to support March of Dimes' mission to help moms have full-term pregnancies and healthy babies. Please make a donation at any Kmart or at marchforbabies.org so that one day all babies are born healthy. After more than 17 years' experience teaching safety skills to thousands of women and men, crime prevention and personal safety expert Susan Bartlestone concluded that by thinking and responding quickly, ideally within 20 seconds, potentially violent criminal encounters can be prevented. Using techniques from many different disciplines and illustrated by 60 real-life examples and success stories, Susan shows how it's done in her new book, Think Fast and Prevent a Violent Crime, How to Respond to Danger in 20 Seconds or Less. Check out www.fightsafety.com. 
thesafe.com for more information. You'll also find information there on Susan's upcoming Crime Prevention 101 Personal Safety Teleseminars. Think fast, talk fast, fight smart. Would stress the many opportunities you have to deter or diffuse a criminal encounter and how to use your brains instead of your muscles in a fight. Look for the new book information or sign up for Susan Bartlestone's Personal Safety Seminars at www.fightsafe.com today. News. Opinion. Your voice counts. Call toll free 1 866 472 5787. 1 866 472 5787. VoiceAmerica.com. You're listening to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. We invite you to share your stories, tips, or suggestions for topics you'd like us to cover, and Susan will address some of these on future shows. Send your story or idea to solutions at fightsafe.com. That email address again is solutions at fightsafe.com. Now back to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. And welcome back again. And I'm talking with Todd Davis about identity theft, and uh, we're getting ready to wind down the show, Todd. So any final comments that you'd like to make uh, before we close out? Yeah, I think, Susan, you know, what we really appreciate is what you're out there doing to educate people on how they can protect themselves. And you do it on multiple levels of security. But when it does come to this identity theft, we want people to know that there are steps that they can take. And if you've lived in fear of this crime, the great news is you don't have to live in fear. And I exemplify by going out there and giving out my real Social Security number. I invite people to go out. You can look at the LifeLock website, but we'll also educate you on some things you can do for free. If a, if a service for the $10 a month isn't something that works for you, that's okay. Just take action so that these identity thieves will find out, even if they get their hands on your information, they can't turn it into money. They don't keep trying. Look, these aren't productive members of society. If they work, if they're willing to work hard, they'd have real jobs. The minute that we make it hard on them, they're going to move on and look for easier prey. And so we've got a great opportunity with with the um, conduits like you to get out this education for people to understand their rights, to know that services like LifeLock exist or the steps that they can take themselves. If we all come together and we all start taking action, then all of a sudden this is not going to be the fastest growing crime in America anymore. If all of a sudden they realize that, you know, 50%, 80% of the people have fraud alerts in place, they quit stealing the data because they can't turn it into money, and we don't have to worry about these nightmares. So we appreciate the opportunity to work with you to educate people out there about what their rights are, to work with them. We welcome them giving us their input on what they've seen out there because you're going to see us continue to add new services like we've done with Wallet Lock and True Address here at LifeLock, which were great feedback from our members that said, here's the other places that we want to see protection and greater security. So we appreciate that opportunity to share it and to get that feedback and, and work with you on that front. Thank you so much, Todd, and I, I just appreciate so much. I know you have to run, and I, I thank you so much for for um, giving me some time today. And I, I do want to tell everyone, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of great information on the LifeLock website, and, uh, and there's even some NASCAR information, or I think that's a kind of a interesting, uh, in, interesting link that people might like to see. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to make sure we get the word out to everybody, and we're going to have a little fun while we do it, Susan. So there's a little NASCAR association All right, as well. A little we have NASCAR fun with. association. I like it. Uh, so, uh, thank you again so much. I know you have to run. Uh, I've got some. Uh, I've got some resources for everybody that I think you might be interested in. Um, in New York State, where I live, uh, the state has produced a very informative video on how anybody can uh, can tie into. It's www.banking.state.ny.us. So uh, there's another more information uh, there on it. There's also a website called Card Cops. That's C A R D C O P S. Dot com, and you can check what to see whether uh, a given credit card number is at risk of being stolen. 
And that what they do is um, they, they take numbers and they run it through some kind of database, and they'll know if your credit card has shown up on suspicious sites. So I read, that, I read about that in a newspaper. I thought that was very, very handy. Uh, there's a website called On Guard Online, which I also thought was very interesting, and uh, it's on it's www.onguardonline.gov, and that uh, teaches you how to uh, go online safely, so that you're not exposing your credit card or or you're reducing the risk rather because you can't avoid it. I also saw um, an article about giving out fake security notes, social security numbers. There's no reason that uh, Todd was talking about doctor's offices and how they are susceptible because they're not uh, highly secure databases and places like that that you have to give your social security number that you really don't need to. Uh, there's a fake social security number, 07805. 1120 that um, this is never used by the Social Security Administration. So you might want to try that one. 07805-1120. There's a whole other list. I have a list of 10 places where you can get some uh, resource and, and information about it. And I'm going to post these on my Safety Solutions website, DearSafetySolutions.com. Now, as always, uh, there are no absolutes in a crime scenario, and no advice can address every variable. Uh, you've got to evaluate each situation individually and respond to it in the way that you instinctively judge best. It is my aim on this radio show to provide you with the information and options that will help you make that assessment instinctive and quickly. And for those of you out there who are survivors of any kind of crime like we talked about today or any other kind of crime or trauma or violence, please understand that nothing that happened to you was your fault. Even if you think that you used bad judgment in a situation and left yourself vulnerable, that is never an excuse for a crime or for violence. So please call yourself a survivor and not a victim and understand you know, that with, with the proper professional help, you can put what happened into perspective and get on with your life. Now, if you'd like to hear any of the past episodes of Crime Prevention 101, just go to my host page on the voiceamerica.com website. All the past shows are archived there. Or you can go directly to www.crimeprevention101.com. I've set up that link, and it will take you directly to my Voice America host page. Now, I've posted show notes uh, for each episode on my DearSafetySolutions.com web uh, website, and I'm going to have a link on today's show to LifeLock and to some of the other uh, websites that we talked about on the show, so you can just go there and click right on it. In the safety tips section of the Dear Safety Solutions website, I'm going to have my resource, resource sheet for uh, some of the resources on identity theft, and there's lots of other good safety tips there. There's uh, my mugger safety tip that I talked about at the beginning of the show. Lots of good stuff. You might find something there that will be very useful for you. If you would like to ask me a question, if you have a comment about today's show, if you've got a safety concern that you'd like me to help you with, if someone sent you an email, a webmail that you'd like me to comment on, please just go to my Dear Safety Solutions website, and on the left side of the homepage, there's a link to the response box there. You can post it. You can also mail me. Solutions at fightsafe.com. Solutions at fightsafe.com. Now, I've got some great shows coming up in future weeks. October is also Domestic Violence Awareness Month. I've got more shows on domestic violence coming up, some surprising resources uh, for victims of this crime. I've also got some shows coming up on more shows on non traditional healing methods. I'm going to be talking about healing 
from crime or trauma or assault through creativity and the arts. Just really great stuff. It would be a crime not to listen to it. So you know what? Stay tuned and stay safe. We hope you got some useful information and inspiration this week on Crime Prevention 101. Susan Bartlestone invites you to join us again next Saturday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time and 2 p.m. Eastern Time here on Voice America. Have a great weekend and a safe weekend.